So, let us write down a theorem. This is again going to be similar to the decent the SGD theorem that we had looked at, but now it is applied to decentralized SGD. So, we are not going to prove this theorem, but uh, we are just going to look at uh, the consequences of this theorem. So, first of all let me write down the key assumptions which are going to be very similar to the ones that we looked at in the context of simple SGD. So, we assume that the function the loss function or the objective function that you are trying to minimize it is going to be a function of x as well as the data points. So, this is a L smooth in terms of x ok that is assumption 1. Assumption 2 is local stochastic gradients gradients are unbiased and have bounded variance. So, meaning so if the gradient is unbiased so which is saying that expected value of g i k is simply the and for bounded variance we have g i k minus where this particular quantity gradient f i of x is defined as the expected value of the gradient of, of the so, if you have data points ok. So, you, ha you have an unbiased estimator. So, low stochastic gradients are basically unbiased and the gradients essentially they have bounded variance ok. So, this is assumption 2. Assumption 3 is that local stochastic gradients are independent of each other. So, for agent i it is independent of agent j's and so on. So, local stochastic gradients are independent of each other. And finally, So, data heterogeneity is bounded. So, essentially every agent has its own private data and the data distribution that agent i has may be different from the data distribution that agent j has right. So, the heterogeneity in the data between agents that is again bounded. So, these are sort of minimalistic assumptions uh, also practical enough, but what we are saying is that data heterogeneity is bounded. that means 1 over n the gradient where So, this is the boundedness on the het data heterogeneity. So, essentially uh, if you have IID samples if data is IID then B is going to be 0 essentially, but for non IID when the data is heterogeneous then you are you are going to have some non 0. So, B is so B is equal to 0 if you have IID setting. So, then under the assumption under the above assumptions and assuming a learning rate gamma. So, this particular this particular learning rate or the step size gamma is order square root 1 over t. So, we have 
so the one so the expected value essentially a similar kind of result that we had in the context of n node training and single node training and so on so first of all this is n node training so you would assume that the this particular error or this particular quantity will at least be this much right so if i look at the beginning of this lecture so we had this particular result right when you have n node parallel training this quantity is order sigma over square root of nt right so in this case you are going to have at least this much error plus the error because you had data heterogeneity and you had uh, no global synchronization right so these terms would also contribute so this particular term is going to be rho where rho is your spectral gap rho two third sigma two third plus okay so this is your so this particular term is your extra overhead because of data heterogeneity you have the b term appearing it right extra overhead because of data heterogeneity and this particular term is there because we do not have a centralized setting we have a de uh, we have a decentralized setting right so we need some iterations because of we need few iterations just to make sure that there is also synchronization between agents uh, estimates had had it been a centralized training we know that for n node parallel training this is the uh, this is i mean if you want to get epsilon close you have to have like a sigma square over uh, t square number of uh, iterations t square sigma square over t times epsilon square number of iterations but in this case you need more iterations because you need synchronization as well as you have data heterogeneity so this term is going to be zero if uh, you have iid setting right if, the data, if there is no data heterogeneity then you have this term is going to be zero but this particular term is still going to be there by decentralized sgd and it's entirely related to not having access to a globally synchronized estimate x okay So let us say uh, we look at this example of MNIST one right. So you, uh, let us say we, we are trying to classify images of cats, dogs and tigers and let us say two of us are the two agents or two workers. I have all the cats images and you have the images of uh, dogs and tigers. So the kind of data distribution that you have is entirely different from the kind of data distribution that I have right. So it is heterogeneous data. Had it been the case that you have one th like let us say uh, half of the cat images, half of the dog images and half of the tiger images. And likewise, if it that that had been the case with me as well, then our data is kind of homogeneous, right? But in like if you have entirely like I mean this would be the extreme case that I have all the uh, cat images and you have all the dogs and tiger images to work with, so we would end up training very different neural networks had it not been the case that right? So you would train a neural network that would be very different from the neural network that I end up training, but we are because we are also exchanging information on the current weights, uh, we are actually trying to train a neural network that works for all kinds of images and not just the images that you have or the images that I have right. So that is where the data heterogeneity role part is important. What? Right. So this is this is the definition exactly this is the definition of the heterogeneity being bounded. So it is like so if you look at the average of all the gradients. So this gradient of f of x is basically the average of all the gradients. So this has a bounded variance. So that is the mathematical definition of when I say data heterogeneity is bounded. Yeah, b is a bound just like we are using sigma as a bound for the bounded variance. So for the bounded variance just like we are using sigma for each agent this is across agent uh, the, how the gradients are going to be going to be having a bounded variance. Okay. 
So let's say consider this setting when the data is IID. So when data is IID, so that means B is equal to 0. So in that case what you would have uh, for parallel SGD, if you want to get epsilon close, uh, like for getting an epsilon accurate, like let us say, so this was the error was in this uh, order sigma over square root of n, right. For decentralized SGD, this error is uh, sigma over square root of n t plus this term, second term here, right, which is sigma, so rho two third, sigma two third, this particular term. Okay. So, we have this extra iteration that we need to perform in order to make sure that the error is in the same range for the two algorithms, right. So, if we want to get epsilon close, then uh, we would have to perform these extra iterations and that is what we call as uh, transient iterations. So, let me write this down, transient iterations. So, this is the number of iterations. So, what happens when in this particular case, what happens as t goes to infinity? So, this particular term compared to this term, so you know this is 1 over square root of t, right? And this is going to dominate this particular term as t starts becoming very large. So, as t goes to infinity, then you would have parallel SGD and decentralized SGD kind of matching up. But then for fixed t, for a finite t, you would have a, I mean you would not have that case, right. So, the number of, so essentially you would get a linear speed up. So, we know that uh, parallel SGD has linear speed up, right, which is to say that, uh, so we just wrote this uh, here. So, parallel SGD has linear speed up because the number of iterations required to get epsilon close is like 1 over n. So essentially, if you increase the number of servers, essentially you would have uh, I mean you would have the linear speed up in the, so it's the same applies here as well. You would have on linear speed up only asymptotically, right, uh, with the decentralized SGD. So, the number of iterations, uh, number of iterations uh, before decentralized SGD achieves linear speed up. is basically your transient iterations. So, at least these many transient iterations have to be uh, encountered before you start seeing the effect of this linear speed up, right. And it basically measures the, so transient iterations are used to measure the gap between the parallel, the parallel SGD and the decentralized SGD. So, it measures the convergence gap, measures the convergence gap. between parallel SGD and decentralized SGD. So, what is the transient iteration complexity? Iteration so, when you have IID data, So, transient iterations would, how do we, how would we equate transient iterations? We want to get in this regime when this term starts dominating this particular term, right. So, if you want to get the transient iteration for ID data, that means sigma over square root of n t, this should be greater than or equal to the other term, which is rho two third sigma two third t two third and 1 minus rho one third. So, this basically gives you a transient iteration complexity of order rho to the 4 n q on 1 minus rho square. So, after these many iterations is when you can start seeing the effect of linear speed up due to decentralized SGD, okay. 
So this is just by just this is obtained by just equating these two terms. What what is the case when you have non-ID data? How would we compute this? So what is the constraint when we have non-ID data? So when we have non-ID data, then this term is also there. But uh, if you look at a value of rho, I mean beyond a certain point, actually this term put. I mean in terms of capital T, both these terms are they scale like t, t two third, right? But if you look at the value of rho, uh, so this scales like one, and rho is a number between zero and one. So basically, you have to compare the these two terms because this this term is uh, essentially going to be much smaller compared to this this whole term is going to be larger compared to this particular term. So we compare these two terms here because it's one minus rho two third versus one minus rho one third. Okay, so so that means I need to ensure that this particular term is greater than or equal to rho two third b. And this gives you a transient iteration complexity of order root 4 and q 1 minus rho to the power 4. So, when you have data heterogeneity, you see it is 1 minus rho raised to the power 4 and not 1 minus rho raised to like power square 2, right. So, essentially saying that, so this number because rho is a number between 0 and 1. So, 1 minus rho raised to power 4 is going to be much smaller compared to 1 minus rho square and if it comes in the denominator that means it would have larger iteration complexity and it would make sense right because if you have a very different data distribution than what I have then it would require even more iterations uh, to start seeing the effect of linear speed up okay right. So, so how can we make the decentralized SGD practical? So what, what do we need to do like based on what you have seen so far? One is uh, when that I mean when it is under, under our control let us say we are the one who, who are distributing the data across agents so then we have to make sure the data is IID right or close to IID. So that is I mean that may not always be the case let us say you have your own private data to start with then it I mean they, we have no control but when you have control on the data distribution then we have to ensure that uh, removing data heterogeneity. So that is one way to make uh, decentralized SGD practical. The other thing is we want to optimize with respect to rho here right and it turns out and when we say this op, uh, when we said that we want to find the optimal topology, so rho depends on the topology that you are going to be working with and when we said that we want to we want to f find out the, so there are two things that we are trying to optimize, one is that for iteration complexity. Essentially, uh, when I say per iteration complexity, you do not want to have a very large degree, right? So we want to optimize that, and we want to optimize this transient iteration complexity, which is uh, which is basically want to ensure that the de decentralized SGD is practical. That is, after like fewer number of iterations, you start seeing the effect of uh, you start seeing the effect of this linear speed up, right? So essentially, we have to optimize this row value, and it turns out. That the static exp something like so it's a very recent paper which shows that static exponential graphs are probably efficient. Well, they may this may not be the optimal topology topology per se, but this is optimal when you compare it with against uh, compare it against all uh, popularly known topologies like ring graph, star graph, grid graph, uh, complete graph. Uh, and line graph and so on. So, among all the co uh, co uh, commonly known topologies something like static exponential graphs are probably efficient. So, what are static exponential graphs? So, let us say you have 6 nodes So, 
So first of all, every node will have, so it's a, it's a directed graph. So static exponential graph, it's a directed graph. And the way you're going to place an edge is, so from node 1 to 2, you're going to place an edge. So essentially from node, from the perspective of node 1, every 2 to the 0th node, every 2 to the 1st node, 2 to the 2nd node, you're going to be placing an edge. So from node 1, so 2 to the 0 is 1. So node 2 is essentially 1 unit apart. So you're going to place an edge. Likewise, node 3 is 2 units apart. And node 5 is 4 units apart, right? So this is this is when you place the edge. And you do this in a round robin kind of fashion. So from node 2, you would be placing an edge here, here, and here. From node 3, you would be placing an edge from 3 to 4, 3 to 5, and and where? Essentially, you have to do it in a modular fashion. So, 3 to 1 as well. So, you are going to be placing these edges in a modular fashion. Okay. So, let's use different colors. So, from 4 to 5, 4 to 6, and 4 to 2. Likewise, from 5 to 6, 5 to 1, and 5 to 3. And again, from 6 to 1, 6 to 2, and 6 to 4. Okay. What is the largest degree of this particular, uh, in this particular graph? Log n base 2, right? So that is the degree. Uh, you can take the, let us say, that is the largest degree because, or rather, in seal function of it. So, every node is going to be connected at most to log n number of nodes because we are connecting it to the 0th node, then to the first node, and to the second node, and so on. So that is the degree of this per iteration uh, communication cost is going to scale like order log n. Like we won't be communicating with more than log n number of and we know that compared to n log n is a much smaller like at least when the number of agents is large log n is a much smaller number right. So you can also show that even though this is a directed graph this is also a connected graph. So every you can reach from one node to every other node. So there is information flow between all the uh, between all the agents or between all the workers so that is another thing and the weights wij the way these weights are defined is 1 over uh, plus 1 if is an integer or i equal to j and it is 0 else. So this is going to be a that is why as I said this is going to be a directed graph as you can also see from here. So, 1 is an a like 1 can exchange information with 2, but 2 cannot exchange information with 1 as you can see from this particular graph right. So, this is this is your static exponential graph with 6 nodes. and the edge weights are going to be following this particular formula. So, if you have these static exponential graphs, then you can show that this is a, I mean the result that you have are probably better than uh, most common topology. So, let me share that result. So, any questions on this, how this static exponential graph is conduct, uh, constructed? So, let me share the uh, comparison between uh, static exponential graphs as opposed to the common graph topologies like ring, ring graph, grid graph, star graphs and so on. So, if you look at the per iteration communication cost and the transient complexity, you can see for, 
I mean, when you see omega tilde, it's up to order log log n, right? So we know that the parietation communication causes order log n. But if you look at the transient complexity, it's better than all other uh, common topologies, right? So this is where like it sort of enjoys a sweet spot between minimizing the transient complexity as well as also not having a very large uh, yeah, large communication cost. So we know that ring graphs and line graphs, these are these have uh, ring graphs like every agent exchanges information with two two neighboring agents, right? So per iteration communication cost is going to be constant in the number. Then if you look at the transient complexity for ring graphs, it turns out it's order n to the seven and something that is not scalable as increase in number of agents. Whereas if you look at this one, uh, comp so this is order n cubed. So in fact, this is n cubed log n, uh, which is slightly worse than uh, like that half random graph, which is order n cube. But then if you look at the per iteration communication cost for this particular graph, it is, uh, it's, this is order n, right? Whereas uh, you, for static exponential graph, this is order log n. So that is particularly attract, I mean, attractive about this, okay? So this pretty much uh, sums up the discussion that we like at least on distributed optimization. There's one more interesting thing that I wanted to show and this is on, uh, so every agent is trying to minimize this cooperative goal, right? But what if, if there is a Byzantine uh, adversary in the network, meaning that particular adversary tries to maximize his or her own private objective function and doesn't care about what everyone else is doing. So in that case, they will be exchanging, so essentially the information that they will be exchanging is right in the sense that they would be exchanging their current weights or current estimate, but they would not be using a consensus to just like other agents. And in that case, they can actually basically end up optimizing their own objective and they won't care about the objective of the, the team objective, right? So let's look at that particular example. So the last topic on uh, in the context of distributed optimization, consensus and things like that is going to be on, uh, so essentially you want to have uh, resilient uh, distributed optimization. in presence of Byzantine adversary. So as I said, what is Byzantine adversary? So they try to maximize or, or minimize their own objective and they don't care about the social cooperative goal, but they do not, uh, they do not share incorrect readings or incorrect estimates. So they share the correct estimates but they do not like locally they are not using the policy that everyone else is using, okay. So, so if you look at the same example that we looked at uh, when we looked at the code uh, or basically the implementation of uh, DGD and uh, second order accelerate like aggregated gradient method. So we looked at a graph like this, right? So this was node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and fi of x was def defined as half x minus i whole square and so gradient of fi would be x minus i. So we are now going to assume that agent 5, so by the way what is the optimal value of this uh, summation fi? This is your co cooperative goal, right? So this is equal to 3, right? when the gradients are 0, so essentially sum of the gradient is 0, essentially 5x minus uh, 5x, basically average of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 which is 3 in this case. So this is your global objective value, okay. Now we assume that agent 5 is Byzantine. So what does it do? It just runs this, so x5 k plus 1 is going to be x5k minus step size times gradient of so that that's all it's going to do so it just cares about minimizing its own objective and it doesn't care about what everyone else is doing in the network while everyone else is uh, in the network is essentially running this dgd algorithm so every 
other agent in the network runs the DDD algorithm. So agent i k plus half is going to be summation j1 through 5 wij xjk and xik plus 1 is going to be xik plus half minus step size times gradient of fi evaluated at xik plus half ok so this is your dtd algorithm so because agent 5 is communicating an information based on x5 so you can see that it you may potentially not even converge to the global objective value right and in fact you won't would not because agent 5 is communicating some other information it's not running the same protocol this is agent 5 and this is only for i in 1 through 3 4 right so if you have a byzantine adversary like this who is just looking to maximize or minimize their own objective uh, then how do we account for such byzantine uh, adversary so let's so for this instead of using this normal consensus algorithm we use something called clipped gossip algorithm So in clipped gossip, so let us first define the clip function. So you have let us say a vector z or a, and a constant tau. So the clip function is defined as minimum of 1 comma tau over norm of z times z. This is the clip function. Okay. So, so agent i what it would do is it would run this x i k plus half is going to be summation j 1 through 5 w i j times x i k plus clip of x j k minus x i k comma tau. So, if this clip value is 1 then you essentially uh, recover the same gossip algorithm or the consensus algorithm right if the clip value is 1. But what we are saying is that so by using a smaller a small value of tau what we are saying is that I am going to rely to uh, like on my difference a lot on my estimate a lot and I am going to play pay a smaller attention to your like the difference from uh, the difference of my estimate to the difference of your estimate essentially this difference x i x j minus x i. So, for the other agents that are cooperating this difference is essentially going to be somewhat smaller in value right. So, then in that case you would have one to be act uh, this to be activated, but if this difference is going to be large then you would see that this difference uh, this quantity becomes activated and this is going to be the case for the uh, Byzantine uh, adversary right that this particular value is going to be activated and that is how you are going to be robust to what they are. Uh, essentially proposing. So, let us let us look at the impl implementation of uh, the script gossip on the same example this particular example and see how having a clipped gossip actually helps with. So, no one knows who the Byzantine adversary is by the way right no one knows who the Byzantine adversary is they are just exchanging information with the neighbors and they are running this clipped gossip algorithm that is it. So, depending on the value difference I mean this alg this value this algorithm or this gossip algorithm would either take 1 or tau or z. In, uh, norm z times this z. No, agent 5 will not. Agent 5 is just running this because agent 5 wants to maximize uh, like or optimize his or her own objective right. So, agent 5 does not care about what everyone else is doing. So, even though everyone is supposed to work towards a social or a cooperative goal there is an ad Byzantine adversary who just wants to optimize their own objective they do not care about what everyone else is doing. But they are truthful in the sense uh, when they exchange information with their neighbors they are not exchanging uh, corrupted information they are exchanging their own the, the current x5 value or in this case x5 they are not exchanging the corrupted information ok. So, is the setup clear to everyone? So, let us look at the implementation and uh, 
So again, this clip gossip paper is very recent, but it's, it's an interesting paper that, as I said, most of the content that you are learning in this course, it has been developed in the last uh, five to seven years. So if you understand most of the concepts fine, then you should be really proud of your learning. Yeah, so the, you expect the difference to be relatively larger. So this is the same uh, example, exactly same example that we looked at last time. So again, just import and necessary libraries. So we are trying to minimize the sum of these convex functions fi. Uh, and we know that the gradient is x minus i. So number of iterations we, for now we keep it to 10,000. Step size is uh, 10 to the negative three. And this is where we define the uh, weights essentially. So this was the algorithm that we looked at in the last class, which was, uh, or not the last class, but in, in, in when we had this implementation. So the only difference now is, so agents one through four, so we are saying all values of x up to last agent, and like excluding the last agent, they essentially run this uh, same consensus step. So they run the same consensus step and then they have the gradient update on the updated z value. And the last agent simply runs this, okay. The last agent is a greedy agent or a Byzantine adversary and simply runs this. So let us see what this algorithm converges to. So if I run, uh, you can see that every agent has converged to 5, close to 5, whether, whereas the social objective was or the global objective was 3. So just a single uh, Byzantine adversary has managed to uh, like basically throw off all other agents and the consensus is happening and really because agent 5 is not going to be, in this case what is happening is the agent 5 is always going to be converging to 5 and because you also have consensus on top of it, then everyone is forced to con converge to a value of 5, right. So this is what happens when uh, one of, when you have a sort of a greedy kind of uh, adversary in, in the network who just like looks to maximize or minimize their own objective depending on its. It is like a leader follower. So you can think of agent 5 as the leader and everyone is a follower, becomes a follower. So now, uh, so we define this clip function. So I wrote written this my clip function. The default value of tau is 0.1, but you can try a smaller value as well. So, so I've just added a smaller, a small check because I'm dividing with the norm of z. So if z is going to be zero, uh, norm of z is going to be zero, then you essentially return zero, right? So essentially for this to be well defined, I'm, I have this if else condition, but really this is what we are re uh, returning, which is the clip function that we just looked at, right? So, and now in, I've changed the gossip uh, algorithm. Now it's a clipped gossip, so wij times xi plus my clip of xj minus xi. Let's start with tau equal to 0.1, okay? And if I let me run this algorithm and let's see what it converges to. Yeah, so you can see that still everyone is still has converged to point uh, that five value, even though you expect them to converge at least perform slightly differently. And that is because we have used a relatively large value of tau. So if we really want to make sure that every like the agents, they are able to reject uh, the adversarial agents uh, behavior or account for adversarial agent behavior. So you can actually run with a smaller tau. And once I do that and run this again, you can see every other agent has now converged to three and agent five is anyway supposed to converge to five. So even in presence of adversary, you can, you can still try to minimize the social or the co cooperative goal using this clipped gossip, okay?